Okay, welcome back to Prima Fasci. Now we're going to review how autofill works. Uh, this is the most important feature of Prima Fasci as it saves the most time for users. And so let's review. We're going to start with our contact here, Sheldon Cooper. And when you get to your contact information, this information here, when you click the edit button, this is all the information you have the opportunity to add when you first create the contact. So if there's something you didn't have or it wasn't time, you can go back here and add it now. So we've filled in all this information. This is also where you're going to keep track of your priority dates um, for showing up in the main report on the main page. Uh, if you edit anything, just click Add Edit here. And it brings you back here. You'll notice these other tabs for address, previous address, phones, jobs, educational history. All those tabs are going to be used for autofill purposes. The I-94 history tool is a tool to grab the I-94 information for your client for a given passport number. Um, and just to review here, if you need to add the I-94 number, you would go here, click Edit, and add the I-94 number here. Um, custom fields is just to manage any custom fields you've created. Those will not autofill in the forms. Uh, let's go to addresses. So first when we're talking about addresses, you need to understand that any address you create, you can designate as the physical address or the mailing address. So when you create an address, you want to make sure that you click one of these labels here if that's what you want to be autofilling. So for example, you're going to have one main address. So if I want to make it this one, I would click here and that becomes green. I know that this address is going to be used in autofill for the physical address. If I click something for the mailing address, I know that that's going to turn green and it's going to be my mailing address. So this is actually the one I want to be both the physical and the mailing address. Let's go on to previous addresses. Uh, when you add a previous address, it's going to put your current address uh, first. So for example, if we edit this address, you'll notice there's a from date, but there's not a to date. That's because if you're still living there, it's till present, and so when it goes to the forms like the G325, it'll say present here. So that's how you let the system know that this is the current address, is you don't put a to date, you leave it empty. Um, if you do add a date, it's going to organize those uh, in uh, order from most recent to oldest, the, the way that they're supposed to show up on the forms as well. Let's move on to phone numbers. A similar concept with phone numbers. When you create a phone number, you need to designate whether it's a work home, mobile, you can choose fax, page, or skype, or other. Fax, fax, mobile, and home, and work, these will be used in the autofill. Okay? So again, that's important. You, you don't just create a number. If it, if it looks like this, we know that this number is not going to autofill in any forms. If we click these, we can tell that it is, in fact, going to autofill uh, for, for the fields that are home or mobile numbers. Uh, similar concept with jobs as far as the dates go. If you're currently working there, Leave the to date blank because um, there's no ending date if you're still working there. And it's going to rearrange, it's going to order those from newest to oldest. Similar concept with the educational history, okay, newest to oldest. All right, now that we understand where to put in the information that will autofill, let's go look at the forms. Um, we're going to go to cases for Sheldon here. We're going to go to the I 130 petition that we've created for him and because we're using this case template it already loaded these forms we've already chosen Sheldon to fill the form in the G28 and for Amy to fill one here now when we filled this form last time we didn't have a middle name for Amy so let's go into the form and just review that as you can see here there's no middle name because when we created this form before the video started uh, she didn't have a middle name and we also didn't have a daytime telephone number uh, designated for her. So this would be the home phone number. Let's go out of the form. Now it's important to know that um, when there's information missing in a form and you want it in the Prima Fasci database for that contact and you want it to be used in other forms, then this isn't the place to put it. The place to put it is in the contact information. So let's just double check Amy's information. We're going to go to Amy Fairfowler, that's the contact we want. Let's look at her address. We see that there's a physical and mailing address. Let's look at her phone numbers. We can see there's a mobile phone number, but there's no home. This would be also the daytime phone number. So let's just click, let's click this one. Oh, this one's clicked as her home number now. Okay. Uh, so let's go back to the case for Sheldon that we were working on. 
sorry, it's uh, actually over here as well under last viewed cases. Let's go back to our forms. Now, if we go to the G28 again, we need to autofill it again. Okay, instead of just autofilling this one form, which you can do here, we'll do it right now. Just click autofill there. Let's go to the form again. It's going to fill in any new information that hadn't been filled in before, right? So if you had changed her name, you added her middle name, which we did here, that gets added. If you say that there's a new daytime phone number, there it is. Okay, so it's there now. Uh, it'll do that. There's also this button here that says autofill all, and it'll re autofill all of these forms. So if we had designated, let's, let's put Amy here. We'll put Amy, yes, sorry. Sheldon there, Amy here, Sheldon there, Amy here. All right, so now we have all of our roles filled out for these individuals. If we had to change some piece of information, we could also click autofill all. And that's going to do sorry, yeah, that's going to refill all of those forms. It's not going to delete any information, it's just going to update any information that's changed in the database. So again, now we could look at you know any of these forms like the I130, and it's going to be up to date with her uh, first, middle, and last name. It's going to have all the other rele relevant information there that we've inputted. Okay, so that's that's how we handle the autofill information in Prima Fasci. Um, if you have a hard time remembering, you also have this helpful hints menu here. We may change the name of that um, in the future, but click on this, and you can also see a brief article here on how it works. We'll include a link to this video here as well. Okay, so this is another resource. Uh, if you need to remember how something works in Prima. All right, so thank you, and that's how easy it is to do the autofill in Prima Fasci.